Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome to the debut episode of an experiment that we are calling The 45. This is Jack. I'm Jack's dad. We're here to do what we do off camera, which is debate and talk about football. We really don't know what we're doing. In some sense we know what we're talking about, but we figured it'd be fun to capture it on camera. And hopefully you'll watch for about five minutes each week is what we're hoping for. Today we're gonna to talk about our predictions for the upcoming Premier League season. Uh, we made all these predictions prior to the season started. We're recording as the season is starting, so it's a little bit distracting. We're a little slow, not all that organized, but this should be enjoyable. Our first topic is going to be taking a look at who we think are going to be this year's top six. We've got six typical teams that spend the most money that usually have the biggest presence. Do we see that continuing, or is there a shot at somebody coming in from the outside? So, big spending clubs. Spending, what, almost a billion dollars in the transfer window probably thus far? Yeah. Some not spent enough? Spurs mainly. I mean, they've sold Walker, but nobody's come in. So, I mean, that they definitely have a lot of issues, but I still think they're a very strong club right now. But the Manchester clubs, the other London clubs, even Merseyside are getting in on this huge spending spree. Due a lot to of money. A lot of money from the TV rights, NBC here in the United States. and NBC, by the way, just put up a paywall for what used to be free with your cable subscription. This has kind of gotten me annoyed over the weekend. I didn't realize you can't watch the non-broadcast games unless you pay NBC 50 bucks to watch it. Horse crap, I'm not happy about it, but anyhow. Yeah. I digress. So, I'll go with my number six position. Poor old Arsenal. Arsenal being Arsenal. Who knows what's gonna happen with Sanchez. Ozil's not even a guarantee that he's gonna stick around. Arsene Wenger being Arsene Wenger. Lacazette was a nice signing. Yeah. I don't know that it's enough. We know Arsenal starts out well. We know they finish well, but in the middle, they're crap. Yeah. Don't know whether that's going to be enough. And they've got the added problem of Europa League football. Thursday, Sunday games. Yeah, it definitely. You saw last season, Liverpool finishing fourth whenever they probably didn't have a squad that was good enough for fourth. And Chelsea winning the title was definitely helped by the fact they had no Europa League football. Whereas Manchester United finished in sixth with Europa League football. It's definitely going to be a huge issue. And I think Kolasinac is a pretty good signing for them at left back. He has potential to be probably one of, if not the best left back in the league. But I feel like the biggest issue for them is the center, center midfield. So Ramsey, Shaka, I don't think that they're... Shaka drives that. I don't like him. Yeah, He's a red card waiting to happen. He's a yeah. lot like our friend that... United that way, Fellaini, um, yep. who's probably going to be playing a lot less this year with all their imports, but we'll yep. touch on that in a little yep. bit. Jack's number six, he's got an outsider. Yeah, I don't even think, I don't think it's so much so Arsenal struggling that they're going to finish seventh, but more so Everton out, outperforming their expectations. Because if you look at some of the signings that they've made this year, you look at the likes of Michael Keane, Jordan Pickford, Davi Klaassen from Ajax, and even Sandra Ramirez for $5 million, and then definitely Wayne Rooney coming back on a free. Even after selling Romelu Lukaku, they've still made some fantastic acquisitions. Komen, good manager. Yeah, he's a very good manager. We saw that at Southampton. He was a huge reason why they finished around 8th place. And I feel like Arsenal may not be the one to finish 7th, but I feel like it's very possible that one team does finish outside this top 6, does finish outside of it. So you're, I'm getting the, you're hinting around that it may or may not be Arsenal. Yes. Winger out. You're going to hear a lot of that all season long. Yep. yep. Number five for me, I've got Chelsea. Uh, I just don't think they're... I think they're going to come off a high. Look what happened to Leicester City. They mm -hmm. turned on Ranieri last year after they won the yep. title. Still going to be a great team. They've made some really good signings. I don't know what's going to happen with, with Diego Costa. It sounds like he's put on weight and not getting along with yep. Conte at he's all. He's definitely probably going to leave. He's out. Um, we'll touch on, on back three formations. Don't know if he's going to stick with that this year. Yeah. Um, but that's, I mean, he's driven that in as a, as a, uh, a fad. In, in yeah, everyone's everybody. picking up on it. Even like Crystal Palace are saying, oh, well, let's just play three at the back. Why not? Let's play Van Arnold as a left wing back. Speed will kill it. Yeah. And I think Murata as a signing up front, he's definitely, we have the advantage of seeing the first games of the weekend, and they did lose to Burnley, which... Makes me a little, which makes me a little nervous about. We'll cut that part out. Which, which makes me a little nervous about my prediction, um, but I think Maratta definitely has the potential to lead the line. It's a heavy shirt. It is a heavy. He shirt. didn't like the fact that they were getting all over him for missing a penalty in a yeah. 
uh, what was it? The Community Shield. Yeah, yeah. He was complaining about it. But I feel like Bakayoko and Rudiger are also two fantastic signings. But I feel like they gave up a lot too. You sold Matic, you sold Ake. Quadrado was already been gone for like the last two years, so that's not too much of a loss. Also losing Begovic, I mean, how you're much not, do you you're, play? You're behind Courtois. Yeah. You're, you're not going to ever you're start. Not play much. But with Champions League, also, that's also going to add a bit more. You know, demand more on the yeah. top. You've got to have two squads. Got to yeah. go too deep in about every position. All right, who you got at number five? I have a bit of a surprise for me. Manchester United. Um. I just feel like, as a team, Mourinho just does not strike me that he has like an idea for his team. A lot of good talent. Yeah, not Kwaka, a lot of plan. Lukaku. I, I like the signing of Matic for United. Maybe not the price. Forty million is a lot for a guy who's. But if he's going to unlock Pogba winning. like you think he is, I he as a defensive presence. Last year, Pogba had to play both sides of the ball. He's great at doing both of them, but he's much Maybe better going forward at attacking. Um, and with Matic in a midfield two, with Matic who just sits in front of that back four and just defends, and Pogba can just go and he into distributes the well too. He does. He's a fantastic distributor. We saw he was had a lot of assists to Zlatan last year, um, and with Lukaku now this year, that's going to also be a partnership to watch. But I just something about them just does not strike me. You don't like Jose Mourinho. I, I don't. I don't. I don't like him. It's a little bit of bias, but I, I'm not. I'm not overly keen on their prospects this season fair enough number four i've got spurs we touched on earlier haven't done much business in the window just yet they lost walker if not if anything they've gotten worse yeah they got a lot of young guys that are coming up and getting better so i think they're going to be okay but I, they need that big signing there's rumors out there that they're going after martial and some of these other players yeah. it's always tough to make tra- and make transfers within the premier league united's not going to want to let him go not for less than a king's ransom yeah Pochettino, great manager. I just don't know that they can repeat what they did last year. Erickson, otherworldly talent. Harry Kane, two years in a row with Golden Boot. Can he do that again? They've got some phenomenal players. I just can't see them cracking into the top three. I I think Spurs are very good. They've been up and around the top three. They finished third, I think, I'm pretty sure, two years ago and second, second last, last year. year. So I'm feeling like they're going up one position each year. And I feel like they have potential this year. Walker is a big loss at right back. I will admit that. But with $45 million, if they do go sign somebody, I feel like they could definitely add somebody in the midfield. Rumors of Ali going? I think, Ali going? I think they're probably going to keep the core together for this year. Um, they haven't lost much outside of Walker in the last couple of years. Yeah. It's pretty remarkable. And Kane, Ali, Erickson are consistent players, which is why I think that they have a very good chance of finishing above fourth place at least. But... Trippier at right back. Hurt. And he's hurt also. That's a bit of an issue. Do they move it to three at the back? There's rumors that Davinson Sanchez from Ajax, a 21-year-old, potentially bringing him in. I mean, there's is just... Is it enough? Is, is Dutch it players enough? coming to the Premier League first year don't always do all that well. Definitely, definitely true, but fourth, I've got... I'm blank out. I have Manchester City. The, another Manchester club. Manchester City, I feel like they've signed... A lot, and they've got a lot of good players. But the thing is, they've overhauled their squad completely. That's desperate, though. He's, they've spent two hundred twelve million, something like that, and it's just playing three at the back or th- five at the back, three at the back, whatever you want to call it, with Danilo, Mendy, and Walker as your wing backs. It's just, I don't know. Company Stones and Otamendi as a back three. With Ederson, who's never played in the Premier League before. Another Dutch guy coming over from the Dutch club. No, that's... Uh, oh, no, he came over from Port- from Porto. Yeah. Portuguese he, League. Yeah, and he's um, he's got good potential, but I just feel like defensively they're not going to be super solid. And with Champions League and all that, it's going to be... If company goes down, he has a bad track record with injuries. You're left with Stones and Otamendi's or two center backs. to be in good health. Not a lot of depth. Not a lot of depth that's at all. what you're worried about. All right, I've got an all London bottom half of the top six, if you will, which means yep. we've probably got a lot of Northwest coming. So I've got United sitting at third. We've talked about them. Again, I think they're a great collection of talent. I just don't know that they're going to play all that well together yet. I'm not mm-hmm. sure what Mourinho's plan is. Um, but, I mean, on individual talent, probably the best in the, in the league. Yeah, and Mourinho. True. That's why they're bundled yeah. up here in the middle. Yeah. I don't, they're unknowns because they've overhauled their entire roster. How quickly are they going to be yeah. able to gel? Don't know. But 
I mean, if you look at United's individual talent, it's absolutely ridiculous. Mourinho, not the type of manager to play with that kind of attacking talent. Yeah. Lukaku is a bit of an... I don't know how he fits in there because he's... He's a good not, striker. Well, he's great, but he's, he's young. fast for how big he is. Yeah. Doesn't play well back to the goal. You know. First touch isn't that great, but he's a, he's a good finisher. And I think... He's lethal. Yeah, he's, the, he can move. And he's proven. Yes. In the Premier League, which is a huge deal. For a small... for a, Again, it's a heavy shirt. That yes. United jersey is, is not insignificant. Yes. And it's a lot of money. 70 plus million, 90 million. I can't remember what the number was. Yeah. Big, big transfer. Yeah, and it, it was... Partially because he's super young. And if he was maybe 28, you could see that being... Is he 24 now? He, yeah, I think he's 24 right, yeah. right about now. So he's got several years to potentially be the top goal scorer in England. And I have him in fifth, so I'm not overly keen on him also. But that's what's so hard to predict about this top six and even top seven. Any one of these could be one, six, and drop out. Yeah. Arsenal just as easily could finish first as they finish sixth. No, they're not going to finish first. Most likely not going to finish but that's what just makes it so hard to predict about. And I think, at least me personally, I'm, I think Chelsea are going to finish a bit better than what you think that they're going to finish. I think that they are very solid defensively. I think that Courtois and goal is probably the best. one of the best keepers in the, in the world, not only the Premier League. Only one better? De Gea, I think. He's made United look better than they have been at the back and yeah, in the last three or four years. I'm going to go back to them. Bailly, Lindelof, Rojo, Smalling, Phil Jones. None of them really like... Phil Jones doesn't lose when he starts. I mean, the issue with that is I'm not overly keen on them as a center-back partnership. Um, and I mean, it's hard for me to say that whenever there are teams that I've not said yet that have maybe worse defensive issues. Namely, Liverpool. Yeah, namely Liverpool. Who I have... Oddly enough, in the number two slot. Yeah, it's the attack. I have, I they're have. Gonna, yeah, they're gonna exploit those back three because they're so fast, yeah. so fast. The one, I'm part of my predictions are saying that these teams will make one or two moves in the sum, in the rest of the summer because we still have what? Coutinho two, gonna two go. Weeks. So if Coutinho stays and say Osman Dembele goes to Barcelona and Coutinho stays for another year. He's probably going to leave next year. I don't think he can go to Barcelona next year. If he doesn't go this year, it's over for him and go to Barcelona. I, I think he's going to be at Barcelona within the next year. In my, I think it's this in, window. In I think it's going to happen. But so say they manage to find Coutinho. They manage to sign Van Dijk from Southampton, which has been on, going on for like a month and a half. Then they have a real shout to be one of the best. Because Robertson, I think, is a good defensive fullback. He made zero defensive errors for a whole team that was really bad They're last year. Marco Silva was there, and he's a good manager. Yeah, and we've seen that with Watford already. They definitely have some potential this year with him as their new manager. But I think their attack is going to be deadly. Even, not necessarily without Coutinho, they potentially, their midfield had a few issues over the weekend, and they definitely do. Henderson, Chan, Wijnaldum, they're good players, yeah. but they're not. No the Lovana, no Coutinho. Lovana out for three months. Something like that. But Mane... Firmino and Salah as your front three is very good. And, and they, then you got Sturridge coming off the bench. I mean, you've got a lot of depth fit, up front. Yeah. And if they, make, if they get a center back, I think they have a very good chance of finishing top four and doing semi-decent in the, in the Champions League. I have him second also. I think that keeping Coutinho is the biggest thing for them. Even if they don't sign Van Dijk, but they keep Coutinho... They have a chance to finish second. Coutinho disappears for large stretches of time. He'll be w- unbelievable three or four mm-hmm. games, and then he'll disappear for five or six matches. Yeah. You won't see, you won't hear about him. And they can't have that. Yeah, they've got enough depth. I think they need to bring in another midfielder, regardless of whether he stays or goes. Certainly, if he goes, they've got to bring another midfielder in. I don't know that Southampton's going to let Van Dyke go. They're not going to certainly let him rot on the bench. He may end up at Chelsea, at Chelsea which in which case that would screw everything up. Yeah, but. Chelsea, if you bring in Van Dyke and you got Van Dyke, Aspilicueta, and David Luiz, that would be ridiculous. That would be very They've hard. already got a great back three, yeah. and that would just be ridiculous. And if, if you put him in the middle and everybody pivots off him, he's a great distributor, yeah. phenomenal defender. Just, yeah, that would be, that would, that would yeah. be nasty. All right, in the number one position... I don't feel really good about this, but yep. I gotta. I can't see Mourinho. Everybody's talking about his second year, second full year yep. is when he wins the title. It's certainly possible, but yeah, uh, I don't know. They they're gonna have the the 
I don't know. I don't see it happening. I'm not real comfortable with City at the top. I'll be here. I'm not real comfortable with City at the top at all. Um, but I think Pep Guardiola is going to get this team playing. They're going to score a ton of goals. Question mark is Raheem Sterling. I think, I think again, he, he's been he's been growing under City. I think last year in Pep's first season, he made a lot of strides from. I don't even remember who the last manager was, but he's definitely improved from Pellegrino. The, Pellegrino, from the player that he was back at Liverpool and in his first season at City. He's definitely improved a lot. Leroy Sané, Bernardo, Sané is great. Yeah. Bernardo Silva, they've got some great wingers, Sick. as well as Aguero and Gabriel Jesus up front is probably the best two-striker partnership in the league. And then if, if Jesus can stay healthy, healthy, that's been a huge issue for him. He broke his metarsal. He got into like, feet problems are not good for, for soccer players, not, for not, footballers. Yeah. De Bruyne. He, De Bruyne, yeah. They have... How about all those Chelsea cast-offs coming back strong? If Salah continues to do what he's done in the preseason, yeah. you got De Bruyne, and then... And you almost look at Chelsea's transfer window, who they're selling, Matic, Nathan Ake. Watch out for him. He's probably... Go to Watford. He's good. Yeah, or Bournemouth, I think, he went to. Shalaba went to Watford. That's right. Watford. That's right. Um, Bertrand Traore, Christian Atsu, Begovic. Atsu is going to be good for Newcastle. Interesting to see yeah. where Newcastle finish out if they get if they stay they, up. They, they have not done. made too many signings, and Benitez has not been happy with that. But well, that's the owners coming out saying, "Yeah, I can't compete with the big boys." I think they definitely have a and chance. You got to develop. Out. Yes, you have to develop. We got number one. I've got Spurs number one, which Woo! is tough to they argue. They need to sign. They need to sign. It's, it's tough to argue. From what we've seen from the summer. But I think that Harry Kane, Deli Ali, the core of their team is just so good. Dude, Erickson is, I think, he's phenomenal. Underrated. Yeah. Chronically he's, underrated. So, yeah. He's an incredible playmaker. And then you and then we haven't even mentioned Hyung Min Son once, who is a six foot he's the Korean Ronaldo, basically. Yeah, he's an unbelievable. He's yeah, he's and then Yoris in goal. Also pretty underrated in a division where you have the likes of De Gea and Courtois. He's also very, very good. Alderweireld and Vertonghen, that's one of the main reasons I'm confident in them to potentially win the title. That's probably, good besides back, besides Chelsea, probably the best two center backs, two to three center backs in the league. Those two guys. And we saw it last year. They were sensational. As a duo, they're unbelievable. They're, yeah, they're, they're sensational. Strong everywhere. But again, there's not a ton of depth. Yeah. And maybe this is Pochettino's plan is to not introduce... Chaos into the squad with new signings and new people. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, Liverpool only had three signings, but I mean, City and United have completely torn their teams They've up. Brought, what five? That's five, five, from four hundred million, five hundred million between them. Yeah, basically. Um, but I think, I think Spurs definitely have have the potential to do it. But at the same time, Liverpool could somehow manage to do it. Chelsea could. Any, almost any team has a has Take a, a hat, put all the names in there, pick it out, and you would be just as good as this. Basically. Or anybody, any pundit out there. Yeah. Money, good money right now is teams to be on City, which doesn't make me feel good. Whenever yeah, you see prevailing definitely. public sentiment going one way, you should, generally speaking, you should go the other way. I mean, last I year. didn't do it, but. Last year, City were also favorites to win the league, and they finished third, which isn't bad, but you never know. Yeah. I mean, Arsenal, you never know. They had no wow. distractions at the top. You know, Chelsea yeah. didn't have any distractions in Europe. And yeah. Conti, brand new manager, played the back three, disrupted the league, took the league by storm. Nobody knew what hit him. That was over. Definitely. All right, we're gonna move on now to uh, our predictions for Das Golden Boot. Who's gonna take it? It's kind of like Das Boot. Okay. Can you see the German movie? No, no. bad joke. No, All right. All right. Now we're gonna take it to the Golden Boot and. Uh, who have we got? We've talked a lot about... All right, Harry Kane has won it two years in a row. Yeah. Sergio Aguero alongside you know Gabriel Jesus is going to score a ton of goals. He's been up there for the last but, few years. you know, can somebody also from that Spurs team, like Son, can he do it? No, probably not. Yeah, they're too multidimensional to Liverpool, have one Liverpool, I don't think there's any one person that's going to stand out. They're going to have so many people scoring yep. goals. Um, Firmino has a chance if he... Gets that. It's his third season in the league. Yeah, I just don't if think there's enough. Turn around. They're going to score a ton. Yep. You could have three guys with 20, 20 goals on that team. Yeah, but probably not one dominant scorer. Yeah, who, I don't, well, who else can you... I mean, I've got to go... This is a lone probably bright spot for, for Arsenal. He <laughs> <laughs> so I had them in six. Jack didn't even have them in their top ten. Or excuse me, in his entire top six. Top six He's got them falling out. Yeah. Um, but you said it earlier when we were chatting off camera. 
that that system sets up for him to yeah. score gobs of goals. I and mean, I think Sanchez did it last year. He's not even a proper striker. Yeah. I mean, Giroud, he scores a lot of goals whenever he plays. And, I mean, he's Olivier Giroud. So, I mean. <laughs> what, is, what do they call him? The meaty forehead? <laughs> All right, who you got? I've got I, consistency. I mean, that's part of the reason I have him potentially winning is he's just the best scorer. And he's, when you got Erickson feeding him the yeah, ball. Yeah, he does not have, like, the flair, the... Maybe like Lacazette. He's also Lacazette definitely has a chance in his first year to be very, very good. Three years in a row, twenty plus goals at Lyon, and he's got the consistency. So does Harry Kane. I think Aguero and Jesus. I initially thought maybe Gabriel Jesus can have a shot in his first full year in the league, but injuries with uh, him, he's him a, too. He needs a year to bet in. And Lukaku, show me inconsistency. Sanchez is moving back, so he's going to get more less goals as that happens because he's just. Not the focal point anymore. Anybody outside the top six that has a shot, I can't even think of anybody that would come to mind. That I mean, nobody. Var, Jamie Vardy. Jamie I, even talked about him. I mean, that guy's a goal scoring machine. Yeah. If, Mares looks unhappy. Yeah. If if Lester can if Lester can turn it around, Vardy could definitely be. And I mean, Ian Acho, that's a fantastic signing for them, in my opinion, because they start two up top then. Uh, him maybe in the attacking midfield position, slightly behind Vardy, or two up top in a hole. He's definitely, he's a lot like Vardy where he's quick, but Vardy can get into the channels more. They definitely have great potential there. And also he's young. He's like 21, 20. Yeah, he's, I, Lester's got a shot at getting into the top six. We didn't talk about them at all. But yeah. it, I mean, it'd be interesting to see what Craig Shakespeare can do with that squad. Also, I mean, the pressure is off of them. Yeah. I mean, last year it was like... Uh, you knew that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, you knew they were... They, this is what I don't like about that team. Is they stabbed Ranieri in the back, I felt like. I mean, I mean yeah. bygones, but yeah. it just was not cool. Yeah. Not cool. I think it's definitely going to be interesting. I mean, this is... Every year, the Premier League gets more competitive and more interesting. More money, more players. I and mean, it's, it's, a it's an embarrassment of riches with the talent. Yeah, yeah, but... And then you look... Continent, and that's also an issue continentally. In the Europa League, in the Champions League, teams... Well, mo mostly Champions League, because Man United won the Europa League last year. But in the Champions League, teams struggle because it's just so hard each week. Even playing against Burnley or yeah. Huddersfield, yeah. you still have issues because they are... They're good teams. And they're, Yeah, I mean, Huddersfield and Brighton could probably be mid-table teams in, like, League One. They're yeah. that talented, but they're just stuck in England. Brighton concerns me a little bit, and we'll touch on this later. Yeah. They don't have a heck of a lot of Premier League experience in that side. Great manager, but yeah. I I think they're at a, well, they're at a bounce. I don't know if they're going to stick. Yeah. All right, the Golden Glove. Who do we think would be the top keeper for the year? Um, I don't know that De Gea has ever won. That's who I've got. I can't see. He makes he that year. team Yeah, he cares. Click. Me, honestly. I mean, he's the reason that they've had any shot at relevance in the last three or four that, seasons. The reason I don't have De Gea. Um, the reason is I don't like the defense in front of him. Valencia is a good right back. Captain. And he's good at attacking, but defensively, he's, there's, there's a few question marks. And I don't like their center-back partnership. I mentioned it earlier. I think that it's going to be... De Gea is definitely probably the best keeper, maybe even in, in the world. Arguable. Against, yeah. I against will Manuel. not argue against you. And he's going to have a great shot, but I feel like it's going to be a bit harder with the defense in front of him. And that's why... I have. I just think they're going to be moving forward so much. They're going to be. They're going to. I would not be surprised if they had 55, 60 percent possession throughout the course of the year. All right, and next. I've got Golden Glove. Yoris because he's, again, outra he's outrageous. Consistency and the defense in front of him. I probably, if you took uh, Vertonghen and Alderweireld and put them in front of De Gea, that would probably. Oh, that'd be sick. That would just be unstoppable. But De Gea doesn't have that, and I think Yoris has a bit more of that and Courtois we haven't even mentioned him he has definitely a good chance with that back three in front of him and he's had so much time in Europe I mean played with Atletico went through all their I mean he's just yeah he's a good those are three of the best keepers in the world yeah I mean maybe you take you know any of the, the two guys in, in City or the you take the two guys that are out in Barcelona and Real mm -hmm. Madrid maybe Ter Stegen yeah. not sure they're all Buffon, on the same level Manuel and, Neuer yeah those guys you talk about also but it's definitely it's one of the lesser talked about things. Who's the best keeper? In it's the not league. sexy. Yeah, not exciting. It's, it's not defense. Isn't Doesn't it? score goals. Yeah. They stop it. Basically. All right. What do we got? Next up, we're going to talk bottom three. So who's uh, on the bounce? Who's going to be heading and, out? And this is also almost equally as hard as the top six because 
we can't foresee six, seven months from now, whenever players get injured, players drop off the of form, maybe even in January or the rest of this, this transfer window, the summer transfer window, make some more signings. You really can't predict who's going down. I, I feel pretty comfortable with who I've got. So in the 20th position, I've got Burnley. I think they got lucky, a little lucky last year, a little bit fortunate. I mean, anytime you're going against Sunderland and David Moyes, you got a leg up. And um, the big just, thing, even though yesterday we saw them beat Chelsea on the road, on the road last year, they, I don't think they won a single game. So they got a little bit lucky. I mean, you almost saw it. They had a, they were up a man for 80 minutes of the game. They conceded two goals. And they were up not up two players, and they still were being battered by Chelsea. Yeah. I mean, being battered by Chelsea. A lot of teams get battered by Chelsea. Yeah. I have them in 20th also. I just... And after, good enough. after losing Andre Gray, after... That's going to be a tough loss to absorb. Losing Michael Keane, another huge one. I think they've... I don't know why I wrote it, but they have they have made some signings. They have a little bit of hope. Not going to happen. But I, I'm fairly confident that they're probably, unfortunately, going to go down. Bye-bye, Burnley. I've got Swans. Swans have been flirting with relegation yep. for the last couple of years. Yep. Um, they've lost Jack Cork. Gomez, they lost, didn't play with them last yeah. year. Sigurdsson's rumored to be on on the way out. I just, no, th- I think they've lost heart in a lot of ways. The thing that I have with Swansea is if they lose Sigurdsson, I think it's probably over for them. I don't. I think that they have a chance to stay up again, but I think time is is running out for them. They're they're slowly just on the decline. Yeah, not gonna not gonna come back. And I have I have Brighton. As one of the teams to go down, and that's and that's as you mentioned, a lack of Premier League experience, and the fifty-sixth different stadium. They have a beautiful park, by they the do. way, they gorgeous do. park. Yeah, great stadium, wonderful place to play, great atmosphere, thirty thousand people, local owner investing in the club. Love to see that they built that stadium. I think two thousand eleven was the inaugural year. So, great, great story. I've got them staying up, which means my seventeenth team is unfortunately Huddersfield Town. Um, they're rumored to try to get Danny Ward again from Liverpool on loan. They're a little shaky in the goal in the goal position. Mm-hmm. Um, we did see what they did yesterday, which was a little surprising. Yeah. But again, I don't think they've got the firepower yeah. to stay up. Yeah, I I have them in 18th. Also, I think that it's yeah, Newcastle for me are the team that has the best chance to stay up. I think that they just have they were out last year and. They were in the year came before. Right back up. Yeah, they came right back yeah. up. They've got a lot of talent in that team. Rafa Benitez is a seasoned coach. Don't know. Really, I'm he was surprised. a Real Madrid <laughs> coach two years ago. He took Liverpool to the Champions League title. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a good manager. And if they finally sign a few players, owner says no money, <laughs> which is an issue. But I feel like they have a, they have a good chance to stay up. But Huddersfield, I mean, I'm gonna great admit, story again. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Don't see him sticking around. Yes, yes. Too bad for them. All right, we've got five key questions. Um, we touched on some of these, so we won't have to elaborate a whole heck of a lot. First one, what are Spurs doing in the transfer window? Yeah, they, they've they sold three main players. Walker, Walker is a loss. Yeah. yeah that's bad. I mean, Nabil Bentelev and Clinton Njai went for about $25 million combined, which means that they have the funds. They're building a new stadium, which is one of the reasons they haven't been able to splash out the money. But... It's there. Like they're they've been in the Champions League for the last two seasons. They're not a flamed out club. They have flamed out in the Champions League, but it's just you wonder. But then a huge issue for that is you look at their team. Where do they upgrade? I mean, yeah. besides depth. Trippier, they just need depth. Besides Trippier, maybe upgrade on Dyer and Wanyama, but that's gonna probably cost you a lot of money to potentially upgrade on them. They're not happy with Rose. Rose is not happy with yeah. them. He he probably is if he leaves for like fifty million to say Man- if Manchester United sign him and they have him on the left and Valencia on the right, that's huge for them because those are two of the best fullbacks in the league. Well, they showed. I mean, they left Rose on the bench yesterday and started the other Walker. I forget it's a what hyphen oh, last yeah. name. I, he played Kyle great. Walker, uh, yeah. Another Kyle Walker hyphenated something. Yeah, yeah. We'll get it in post. <laughs> <laughs> they've got. They've got a very good team. They've had the team for for a few seasons, and they've built it, and it's got a very good foundation. But I mean, it's just, what are you doing? Like, just 
sign a few players Nothing. and just do the Pochettino pose. We're waiting for the Pochettino pose. Basically. All right. Second question. Manchester, red or blue? I think it's going to be. It's interesting because City, the chemistry thing, and I think that at the back, they have maybe a few issues, but they've got a very good team. In my opinion, probably the best talented team. But it's just, can it all click together on a consistent basis in the Champions League? Pep's going to be desperate. Yeah, I mean... I don't know how patient their ownership is with him. Compared I mean, to Pep Guardiola. Have to be patient. Yeah, yeah, compared to United, I think that City, I think are going to do better than United. I got them winning the league. And as I said, I am not don't have a lot of conviction behind yeah, that pick. Yeah. But because did. United, I mean, they're both very good teams. But I think that just City are... It's a better team. I think Guardiola is going to be a better man manager and a squad manager than than Mourinho. I mean, Mourinho has a tendency to rub on people and just alienate them. If, if you look, the I think the fact that he's getting along with Juan Mata after having gotten yeah. sick of him and sold him at Chelsea, and then last year they kind of got to now he's a front line starter for them. And yeah, I mean not front line offense, but he's starting. That's game. that shows me that Mourinho can change his mind, which I didn't think he could do because I like when Mata was at Chelsea before. Uh, Mourinho got there he was really good and he was good even under Mourinho but for whatever reason Mourinho didn't like him and I think that you, you kind of mentioned it like Guardiola I think is a better man manager than um, Mourinho because you know, I'm mostly at Raheem Sterling where he it was his second season where Pep Guardiola came in and he instantly got Sterling better production because he was kind of kicked out of Liverpool and everyone kind of hated him yeah. and then now he's actually slowly rebuilding his career under Guardiola and I think he's improved a lot since he's come in and if he can do the same thing with Danilo Walker Mendy turn them into good wingbacks because if you have Kyle Walker and Benjamin Mendy as your wingbacks supporting Kevin De Bruyne David Silva Jesus it's Sergio Aguero ridiculous. it's a very very good attack and I think United they don't have they need a 15 man squad they can't play all the talent they have you look at their bench during the game, right. and it's better than a lot of teams in the top six. Yeah, they are yeah. super deep. Yeah, and I so think keeping those guys happy. To your point, we were talking about a man manager. Yeah, got to keep the guys that are on the fringe of that starting shot. eleven and keep them engaged and still know that you're going to have a role when we get into Europe, when we get into these cup competitions, whatever it is. They're going to be playing sixty matches. Yeah, and I think it's inter- it's interesting to see how Ederson does. In the league, because Guardiola and <laughs> and goalkeepers and keepers is, is terrible, <laughs> I mean, terrible. I mean, he brought in Claudio Bravo, who at Barcelona was a very good goalkeeper, and then in a year turned him into, oh, he can't save. He's a, he's a bad goalkeeper. All he just kicks the ball. Better than Joe Hart. Joe Hart can't catch. <laughs> I mean, that's interesting at West Ham. That I mean, and West Ham have Chicharito. I mean, yeah, that's also interesting. and they also signed Arnautovic. From, I think West Ham from sleeper. I'm, they're not. I don't think they're a candidate for the top six. But not, not, maybe. Right on the outside. Village as a manager, I mean... Can they finish higher than Wenger in <laughs> Arsenal? <laughs> Arsenal finish. Arsenal getting relegated. All right. Uh, this is an interesting question. So, we talked about this earlier. Yeah. I think Liverpool are, could potentially, you know, score the most goals in the league. And I actually have two points here that I want to make because this is a ridiculous, bold prediction. But... In 2009-2010, Chelsea scored 103 goals. Which is the most ever. That's the record. Yeah. Single season record for a Premier League team. Liverpool almost did it in 2013-14. They got like 101. SAS. Yeah. Derby in (laughs) 2007-2008 conceded 89 89 goals. Right? That's a lot. (laughs) Right? I think they scored 20. They had the fewest goals at home. That was was not a regular season. That was not a good season for them. Yeah. I think... (laughs) No, we're going to have plenty of space. We're not going to cock for 45 minutes. All right. All right, I had this. Man. Yeah, we, don't, we don't have to make it a direct cut. No, I know. So I'll literally like write a note in <laughs> edit in post. I'll say like, we ran out of space. We're gonna this. Right. We uh, we ran out of space on the SD card. We had a little technical difficulty there. Not that anybody out there knows that, but um, so <laughs> we're talking about they conceded a lot of goals. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think that we'll have a good shot at breaking both of those records. And having like a 20 or 25 goal differential, let's say they score 110, 115 goals and, mm-hmm. and concede 90. Like a lot of this con- is contingent on what happens with Coutinho. Do they bring in Van Dyke? But as Anything they are right. currently constituted, I could see them 
110 goals, yeah. conceding 85, 90 goals. They're going to win a lot of games. 5-3, 4-1, 4-3, 3-2. And I think one issue with Liverpool is a lot of people are, are, are blaming the personnel. They're saying Dejan Lovren is not a good enough center back. He's a pretty, he's a, he's a good center back. He's not what you want. He and Matisse are good together. But I think part they're of the great. issue is Klopp as a manager is not that great defensively. So I think people are just saying, do you bring a bad like it miraculously turns it around? Yes, it makes you a difference. You have to have a plan. But the, the, the structure is not built to have a very good defensive team. So I think part of it has to be Klopp has to be willing to maneuver his tactics to potentially become better defensively because even if this extreme does happen... Check pieces. Yeah, yeah. Alberto Moreno. Yes. You have to get that the basics right. Set pieces. I mean, I, I don't understand zonal marking. Like Nobody on the front post. It, it makes no... It, Good idea. It makes, it makes no sense, in my opinion at least. And... It is partially. I mean, Klopp has done a great job making a sensational attacking team. Now it's part of They're him. They're a good team to watch. Fun team to watch. As a neutral, but if you're like a Liverpool fan, you're probably having a heart attack. It's just every just game. You're watching, yeah. because whenever a team attacks, you're not wondering if... You're wondering if it's just going to be another goal for them. Because, I mean, Watford put three passes to them, and they didn't, even have, they didn't even have Andre Gray or Dini starting. Or who was there? I'm blanking on that. Yeah. Doesn't matter. They, they should not. If oh, you're, Kaka started, and he scored. Yeah, if you were, he's a big dude. Yeah, if you are going to try and win a title, you should not be conceding three goals against Watford. Away, but still, not good. I mean, you know how Vicarage Road is. I mean, it's just it's a tough place to play. It's, it's like it's the new Sellers Park. It's like a cold, rainy night at, at Stoke. Uh, <laughs> dog crossing. We have three dogs. They make a lot of noise. You'll probably hear them at some point. We'll give a house tour at 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> uh, at 100. 1,000. All right. Uh, next topic um, is three, three at the back here to stay. So Conte introduced this to the Premier League last year. Killed everybody. Nobody knew how to address it. Speed kills it. You have to have the right personnel. That I mean, they had three all-world center backs yep. that could play back there. Two decent wings. I mean, I mean yeah. And the teams that, like Crystal Palace... I've seen are potentially going to try it. Arsenal, they tried it with Monreal. Who do they have? They had Monreal, Kolasinac, their new signing as a center back, as well as Rob Holding. And that's just... Didn't work out. I guess well, Leicester, they had to go back to four Steve kills immediately. back three. Absolutely. Especially somebody like a Liverpool or a Leicester City who have speed merchants at the ready will destroy a back three I mean, unless you've got the, the right back three. I'm pretty sure Liverpool won both of their games against Chelsea last year because yes. the front three of for Liverpool, for instance, it's literally a one-on-one with each center back, pretty much, with maybe the wing backs being able to help. But that's going to be issues for three of the back teams. And it's not just Liverpool. As you mentioned, Leicester in the Arsenal game. Jamie Vardy, Shinji Okazaki, Riyad Mahrez, they had space to run into. I mean... Fast. Vardy was getting into the channels, and it just Arsenal couldn't stop it because they didn't have the players to do it. And this is a problem for Spurs too. They don't, they can't take advantage of a back three because they they're can't. not, they don't have any pace. They have great players that can get into space, but they have no speed merchants like yep. those other two teams do. Yeah, and teams, the flexibility teams are developing is good for them, but the biggest issue. Is, Meaning to be able, you can go start as a back three, go to a back four. Like what Arsenal did. Like yeah. they went to back four after being on the back three and they won the game four three short two goals. But I think that you've got to have the right personnel to do it. And I think I've seen Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace may not do it. I'm using them as an example, but I've just seen potentially that they're going to do it. And they're playing guys like Milanovic and Scott Dan at center back with Wayne Hennessy in goal and Vitavarald, who's never played a game in the Premier League where he's played maybe one now that's not the personnel you want playing a back three. Mm-mm. So unless you were Chelsea and you've maybe had a squad that has the players in place to do it, it's not a very good idea. Not going to happen. And I think that it may... I think the trend's probably going to end pretty soon. Best of the newly promoted sides. We touched on Newcastle earlier. They don't have money to spend, but they've got the best squad of those newly promoted three. We talked about Brighton and Hove. We talked about... We think that the two... Or I think the Huddersfield two of them are going yeah. down. And we think Huddersfield, Huddersfield are going down. It's, it's, it's definitely because Newcastle have been in the Premier League for a while. And it's the foundation that they've built. And, and Rafa Benitez, phenomenal manager. Real Madrid manager. 
yeah. took, took Liverpool to the to the Champions League and won yeah. it yeah. back in 2005. I mean, he doesn't doesn't become a bad manager overnight. Yeah, but he doesn't have the talent to move beyond consolidation if they yeah. can consolidate. I mean, 13, 12, yeah. maybe, yeah. which is pretty good for a newly promoted side. You look at where you had um, Swansea and Burnley who have been here for multiple years, going back and down to the Championship. So it's it's. It's, it's hard when it you're in that area to stay up. That a lot of people, like almost nobody thinks they're getting relegated. I mean, it's not like, oh, maybe... It's not even a top of conversation. Nobody thinks they're getting relegated because they've got so much talent. they got Dwight Gale on the bench. you got Mitrovic. you got, I don't know how to say it, but you got, you got John Joe Shelby, who got sent off against Spurs. The John Joe being John Joe. I mean, they've got... We'll touch on that in our weekend recap. Yeah, they've got a very, very good team. They could make a good shot at... One of these, the FA Cup or the EFL Cup, you know, just come out of nowhere and win that when everybody else is focusing on Europe and yeah. the domestic comp in the you know the league. I, that wouldn't surprise me. I mean, Wigan did it, for, what five years ago and got relegated. Yeah, I mean, in the same season. They were so, they were in the I think they were I think they were in the Europa League, and in the Championship, which is just something you never see. No. I mean, it's not prioritized by the big clubs. Like if. Seems probably start caring when you get to the quarterfinal, semifinal. Like maybe we have a chance. Maybe we'll let's throw out a few first teamers. But Arsenal always do it. Yeah, Arsenal. <laughs> FA Cup is is. They call it the Arsenal Cup now. Yep, basically. All right. Well, that'll, that takes it for us. I know that was a little bit a little bit longer than we're probably going to do moving forward. But we Definitely. just want to introduce ourselves, talk a little bit about what we see as interesting topics heading into the season. Yeah. Um, glad to have the Premier League back. Definitely it's exciting. Exciting time. Yeah. So. Until next time, thank you very much. We are the 45.